Did any one of you think any time about how to reach God? No, sir. No. Yes. So we are going to discuss about religion. What is a religion? It is a systematic way or systematic belief to attain or to be part of a supernatural power. You know, modern period, science has achieved a lot and some of the people speak that there is no God. Those discussions... Sir, please repeat once again, sir. Religion. Religion is a systematic belief on a supernatural power. Okay. People... Okay, sir. In the modern period, there are people who say there is no God. There are people who say there is God. If we ask directly to you, you will be in a dilemma. Because you have not seen God directly. If I ask you how many of you have seen God, you will not be able to answer me properly. Some, some may say, sir, God is there, God is like this, God is like parents are God, like that explanations you give. So, you know, anything in the, in the world has to survive. There should be a supporter. There should be a person who provides facilities to it. If you are born to the world, if your mother or somebody doesn't take care of you, you will perish. Let it be anything, even animal. You might have seen the delivery of an animal, a cow. The, the mother licks the body of the just born kid and cleans it. Then it's, it permits or it inspires the child or a kid to come and suck the milk. Within hours, the kid that is born will go and suck the milk. But human beings, it is not possible. Somebody has to take the child and bring to the lap of mother and to the breast of the mother and feed it or give some other liquid to the child. Then only the child can survive. So a God, we don't know exactly what the shape of God. We say that God is shapeless. Somebody who controls the nature. And people have constructed the temples. You have seen the previous chapter. Temples, mosques, churches, everything thinking that God is on the top. So the construction is to raise the building. And the main center where God's statue is kept. In the churches also, the, the where the main prayer is taking place. Everything, there is a desire to go to the raise up how much ever possible, go up so that the communication can go to God. We believe that God is in the upper area, in the heavens. So how to interact with him? Is there any social divisions among the God? Any differences among the God? Are all the human beings same in front of God? Is there any caste difference for God? Any color difference for God? Those are the things that we are going to discuss in this chapter. There is a devotional path to divine, to reach God. You know, okay, you can see the book, first part. You may have seen people perform rituals of worship by singing bhajanas, 
kirtanas, koalis, or even repeating the name of God in silence. Some of your parents have told you, please go out, say Rama, 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 or Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. If you are a Christian, you will be asked to pronounce, you will be asked to say Jesus, Mary, Joseph, like that. Or if you are a Muslim, might have asked you to pronounce Allah. Allahu Akbar, go on saying Allahu Akbar. So these are the rituals, outward expressions of interacting with God. You know, you love a person. If you love a person, that person, if you may be your mother or father, when you are in loving that person, when you are in good respect for that person, you will call the name of that person. When you are with your mother, whatever word you see, maybe you are using mama, achi, aji, whatever, though that you very lovingly you call with that word when you are so much happy with the father or mother or your brother. So, so much affectionate way you call it. So that is the way. So that is a repetition of the bhajanas, singing. Sometimes you say, Mama, you are preparing very good food. Papa, you are doing very good. And the same thing father and mother will tell to you also. That is the way the bhajana, the sings, kartanasans, songs, to tell, to communicate to God, to keep in relationship with God. That is what. Even repeating the name of God in silence, and notice that some of them are moved in tears. Some pray to God and then you cry. Such intense devotion or love of God is the legacy of various kinds of bhakti and Sufi movements that have evolved since the 8th century. So, devotion to God. Hindu religion is called Bhakti movement and Islamic religion is called the Sufi movement. Respect to God, behave. Now, we'll think about the God one thing. The idea of Supreme God. Here you see, we'll read the text book here. Before large kingdoms about the different groups of people worshipped their own gods and goddesses. As people were brought together through the growth of towns, trade and empires, new ideas began to develop. The idea that all living things pass through the countless cycles of birth and rebirth, performing good deeds and bad came to be widely accepted. Similarly, the idea that all human beings are not equal, even at birth, gained ground during this period. The belief that social privileges came from birth in a noble family or in a high caste even was a subject of many learned texts. So, in Hindu belief, mainly in Hinduism, there is a belief of a rebirth. After seven... Sir? Ah. Who were the Chandelas? Who were? What is that? Sir, who were the Chandelas? Could Chandelas. Ah, we are coming. We are coming, Chandelas and all those things. They are when a kingdom. Chandela one kingdom was there in central India. Okay. We will come. I will this is about religious discussions. Chandelas are one group of kings in central India. The temple was constructed. All those things we are discussing. Now further we will discuss about it. Now we will just come to this topic about birth and rebirth. Hindu religion believes that human beings will attain God after seven birth. You know, human beings are natural to do mistakes. He has to rectify, get out of that mistakes. He has to, sometimes he may get punishments for the mistakes. And if you do wrong, be sure that you have to bear. I, either you or somebody has to bear the punishment. There is no excuse. If you do a mistake, your parents catch you, they may scold you, they may give a small uh, punishment to you. So they accept the punishment and you have borne the punishments. 
Sometimes nobody has seen it, the, the mistake that you have seen, done, and you get no punishment. So somebody has to bear that punishment. So that is what being believed in nest birth, you will get punishment for that. Sometimes there is a belief that you will be born as like an animal. Others will kick you, others will throw stones at you. So that's a punishment. So after all this punishment, the soul that is in you will be purified. That purified soul will become part of God, will join with the God. That is the belief of Hindu religion. So rebirth will be there for you. In your one life, first life itself, you are very good. You have lived a very good life that is expected to be lived in the society. Then there is no compulsory of second birth. You will be directly taken to heaven. So that is all rebirth about belief. So that is the different things that we see here. It is written there. Then human beings, are we equal? Are we equal? We know we are not equal. We say we try to be equal, but we are not equal. In size, in facial, face ideas, all are same, even looking, uh, all don't look the same. If all are looking the same, you know, in the classes, why we are not able to identify? Even identical twins are different. So it's very difficult. It should be different society. Human beings are different. Height difference, weight difference, face differences, intellectual capacity differences. All so many differences are there. If we say all human beings are equal, it is not at all correct. It is never possible also. But as a teacher, and I look at my students, even if having all those differences, height, weight, color, uh, everything, I should look at them in an equal way. There I have to find equality, not you. There is no chance of equality among you. I, when I look at you, I should try to provide you equal treatment. Whether he is an SC student or a SC student, upper class, lower class, rich, poor, fat, lean, high, heightless, anybody. I as a teacher, when I deal as a teacher, I should deal with you in equal way. There only equality is possible. Not possible in uh, making equality in the class. That is why trust school or education institutions are trying to provide uniforms. At least in the uh, same dress you are looking equal. Height we cannot make it equal. If you are to make equal height, it's very difficult. Weight we cannot make, make equal. There will be differences. It's not possible. So I'm looking, if all the faces are looking same, I may not be able to identify. So those differences are there. When Asa, I am a person, I should look at you. The God, God, that is why God looks everybody equal. That's what we see. Some are born in rich families, having plenty of resources and perform very well. Some are born in a poor families where there is no chance to meet two days like food, two food, um, at a square meal in a day. There are, and there are families where there is nothing is not even a square meal in a day, one meal itself find very difficult. There are families in the middle way where parents are doing good support. There are families where parents don't give support to children. So all these different so differences are there in the society. So it is a God who has to be treated. Let me see where all are inside. Look. Why it is not unlocking? Hmm?
ആ ഓക്കെ ആ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ദ സിറ്റുവേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദിസ് വൺ ഓക്കെ സോ ബർത്ത് റീബർത്ത് and if we are done mistakes we will get a punishment these are all religious beliefs we have not touched and experienced with god the person who has reached in heaven has not come down and tell, told us ah, it is like this there this all our thinking how is heaven our thing heaven is like this hell is like this the italian writer has written uh, when he was tra- uh, traveling to hell and heaven in a big vessel there is a porridge is kept in hell and heaven very big vessel it's boiling and he and there's a long spoon is tied to everybody's hand because it's a boiling we cannot go near to it so a spoon is tied to every person who is around that area so what happens the people in heaven and hell everything is same looking same but the people in hell are unhappy angry and shouting and screaming at the same time people in heaven are very happy they take the food, they eat the food very well comfortable the spoon that is tied is in unity cannot bend he cannot bend the spoon he cannot eat himself in heaven what they do they take the food and give it to other person so that person gives to me so there is a they comfortably eat but in hell what they do all are selfish they are trying to put eat themselves they are not ready to give it to other person when they are not ready to give it to other person what happens nobody can get is putting in on his face naturally boil the material is he is trying to like this it will be on his face when it is on his face what happens it is getting boiled he will scream and he will shout and he will express his anger and nobody is happy in hell that is what we call hell dande has written in his book divine comedy the name of the book is divine comedy divine comedy by dante d a n t e in his, this book only we see this story so he says he is traveling to hell and i'm saying my imaginative story is like right. So that is the reality we know that it is when we cooperate each other when we work it together when we share what we have got each other that place it will be called a heaven when we are not ready to share anything when we are not ready to give anything to others when we are not ready to accept from others it is a hell fighting friction selfishness anger destroying all those things will be going on so that is a hell and heaven so if we ask where is hell and heaven it is in, in our mindset itself why the religious leaders tell you there is a hell and heaven because they want to tell you after your death you will go to hell and hell is like it is a fire permanent fire there is no way to escape from that hell it is told to the people to make the people to get out of the wrong actions to inspire the people to do good things and they say in hell in heaven good facilities are there every time it is easy like good everybody is happy no problems are there permanent it is once you go to hell you have no chance to escape and once you reach heaven it is permanent there so your life in the earth will decide these are taught to you so that there will be a good life in the world people will live lead a good life help others have good relationship with the others that is the reason why these religious teachings are being taught like that the religion is making the people to do good things 
Sometimes you threaten the people. My dear fellow, if you do wrong, you will go to hell. So that threatening is done to make him not to do the wrong activities. Not to create trouble for others. Do good things for others. Treat every human being in a respectable and good way. So all told by the religion so that you do good things for others. That's all. That's what the religion tells. So where you are born in a noble family or you are born in a poor family, wherever it is, it is you who has to do it. Being born in a poor family is not your mistake. But dying poor is because of your mistake. That's what is told. Because you have not put up your effort and achieved what you can. Every individual is given talents by God. Okay, many people usually were une uneasy with the such ideas and turned to the teachings of Buddha and Jainas, according to which it was possible to overcome social differences and break the cycle of rebirth through personal effort. I told you there is a rebirth. I told you the first, even only one rebirth, one birth is enough. After first birth directly you can be taken to heaven. How? If you do good things. So Jainism and Buddhism is a two religious religions that started in India. They are frankly a protest movement against the caste and social divisions of Indian society. They are not born of any other reasons. The religious leaders of Buddhism and Jainism were against the caste divisions of Indian so Hindu society. They protested against the caste divisions. And that is the reason why it emerged in India, social, uh, Jainism and Buddhism. So that caste differences of Indian society made Buddhism and Jainism to emerge in India. And in, in Buddhism and Jainism there is no caste differences. All people are equal. That is what the religious teachings of Buddhism and Jainism. So if you are doing seven rebirths I told you, but if one, one rebirth you have done very good things, but little bit mistakes. So second once more you will be born. So if you are purified in the second, rebirth, second birth, you will be taken to heaven. That's what is being believed in Hindu religion. Many people were uneasy with such ideas and turned to the teachings of the Buddha or the Jainas, according to which it was possible to overcome social differences and break the cycle of rebirth through personal effort. If you put up your effort, tell to God, I am sorry, I have done mistakes, please help me, please take me to hell, oh, sorry, please take me to heaven. If you pray and do good things, you will be taken to heaven. Meditate. Buddha has told, if you have desire, you will uh, do mistakes. If you have no desire, you will not do. But if you don't have any desire, you will not do also anything. Good also you will not do. should have a desire to achieve something. Desire to reach God. You study because you have got a desire to get a good mark in the examination. If that absolutely no desire, then it will, what is use of it? That also is wrong. But desire to achieve something good is, is needed, not to something for eagerness. We should not be uh, greedy. We should get what is right. Others felt attracted to the idea of Supreme God who could deliver humans from such a bondage if approached with a devotion. This idea advocated in Bhagavad Gita grew in popularity in the early centuries of the common era. So Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavad Gita it is told that if you go to God and pray, God will be happy with you, you will be taken to heaven. If you do mistakes, pray to God, ask pardon, 
God, I have forgiven me, stand mistake, please forgive me. Every religion speaks this. Hindu religion tells if you go and dip yourself in Ganga water, all the sins will be forgiven, washed away. No, bit, bit scared, be scared because water is not pure now. It's good water, Krishna. And uh, Islamic religion tells you go to Mecca once in your lifetime and throw all your sins there into the stones there. That's what the uh, Islamic religion tells. And Christian religion tells you go to church and tell to the priest. It is called confession. You might have seen in cinemas at least. Uh, Amar Akbar, I can see uh, um, there is a, in a box, the priest is sitting, the person is telling the sins. That is known as confessions. So every religion has got a method to get rid of your sins. Every religion. So don't think of one religion. Every religion is telling that human beings are there, they have done mistakes, and these mistakes can be purified. You can become a right person if you tell to God that I have done mistakes, please forgive me. So after praying, go to Ganga River, bath yourself. That is not what the religious belief of uh, Hinduism. And Islamic, go to Mecca, all your sins you throw there at that stone. Black stones are kept there. So they throw, they throw stones. That's, that's the, you can see during the time, Mecca visit time. And Christians go to priest and say, <coughs> according to belief, Christian God has given the power to the priest to forgive the sins of the human beings. So he has to tell, tell to the priest. So thus, every religion has got its method. So that is what the tells. So Bhagavad Gita also tells that. You ask God forgiveness. That's what is told there. And look at the Bhagavad Gita grew the popularity in the early centuries in common era. So, to whom to say? There are, there are according to Hindu religion, we will meet them. Tomorrow, that is Shiva or Vishnu. Okay, Vaishnavites and Shivites. Okay, thank you very much today. Okay, bye. See you. Bye. Yes. Okay. Bye.